Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. Today I'll be covering a new type of, uh, well, sort of stock-made pro propeller. So what I've done is I've made a propeller. It's really small, as you can see inside. It doesn't even take up a full uh, fuselage, structural fuselage there. And so what I've um, worked out, oops, it totally didn't connect properly. Um, is a few different things. I've seen a couple of videos posted recently in the last couple of days and a few things when people fail to mention or talk about is if you're trying to design something like this um, the main thing is trying to get the pitch of the propellers to work out right so um, what I did was uh, to try and get the optimal speed from my propellers is you want to turn your um, <coughs> your aerodynamics overlay turned on and you want this blue marker to be as forward as possible while trying to tilt it down as much as possible to get the most amount of forward thrust out of it. Um, if you take the engine tips off you can see where your actual thrust or lift is from the rest of the aircraft and where your center of mass is. That could be a bit better but what can you do with an airplane that is completely hollow. Um, so what I've come up with is a really unique way of designing the aircraft. You notice there's no staging. These are actually bolted to the aircraft. Now you're probably wondering how the hell is that going to work? Um, well I'll show you in just a moment, but what I've also noticed is with the propellers <clears throat> you want them to be so they're aligned dead straight up with each other. When you first put them on I mean you can have them up straight up and down. You'll notice that um, one will be slightly to the right and the other will be slightly to the left. Now what you want to do is you want to go to your, your move tool and you want to move one of them slightly to the right or slightly to the left. So that's how they are by default. So what I wanted to do was just straighten them up a little bit and holding shift I can get a finer movement on those engines. So uh, I'm just going to undo that because I already had it perfect the way it was before. Yeah, just like that. Um, and another thing is uh, the deployment angle. Now again when you're um, changing the rotation of these things by default they're originally like that and it's pointing straight up in the air so as you rotate it this is where you get your speed from so the more you angle so now I've gone too far one way and too far the other way so you can sort of fine tune it a little bit by holding shift or I can even fine tune it some more again by holding the um, turning off the snap toggle and trying to fine tune it a bit more but that's basically how you get the engines to be um, fitted properly basically so we're just going to undo everything put everything back to the way it was and now another thing is also feathering the engine so when the engine is deployed <coughs> it basically has no angle on the blades no I think by default it's set to like a hundred or something so there will be a slight angle so, so if you um, change this it changes the angle of the blades when they're deployed when you press the deployment button if you've set a height key otherwise by default that's where they sit and um, the normal deployment is backwards, so I don't want them to fan out that way, I want them to uh, fan out the other way. So as I have basically a feathering effect on the engines. So what we're going to do is we're just going to um, launch this aircraft now and um, see how this thing works. Now there is no, I didn't put any um, energy generation devices on this aircraft except for the solar panels. So if we go inside the engine here you'll see that it's just um, SAS modules. Now the SAS modules are set to pilot only and I have set an act action key so when I press the uh, 2 on the keyboard you'll see the, the reaction wheels turn on and off. So I can turn them on and off and they're also set to pilot only. Now I'll just put the brakes on here so we're not rolling down the runway. Um, the reaction wheel on the cockpit itself is the only other reaction wheel on the vehicle that's not part of the engines. Now uh, the engines are made of 20 parts in total including the rotor blades and the nose cone tip and the other nose cone tip. So it's 20 parts in total per engine. And then again it only takes up half of the structural fuselage inside there so you could make it a bit bigger. Um, again, the reaction wheels left turned on and on normal. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at the engine. I'll just turn on the uh, aerodynamics overlay and I'm going to feather the engines. Just like so by deploying them. So now the engines are deployed. Now when I um, hold ALT and E it's going to pitch or roll the engines as a trim setting and as you can see they are spinning up and I haven't detached anything I haven't detached anything off the aircraft at all 
Um, shut down the throttle there, you can see the engines are still spinning. You can see I do have liquid fuel in that, but that's just for weight. Um, it's not doing anything, we're just using a little bit of electrical power, not much at all seen there at idle. And the solar panels are, are producing me a little bit of light, not much. Okay, so what I've figured out here is if I uh, remove the park brakes, um, you can see I'm, I'm not really going anywhere because the engine's feathered. So as soon as I, um, actually before I show you that, I just want to show you one other thing too, is um, notice we're rolling. We've got the, the trim rolled set on. Uh, so you can see my control surfaces are turned up and down and that's going to be a very hard aircraft to fly. So when we turn SAS on, my control surface is leveled out and I'm no longer doing anything here with my control surfaces, but the engines remain spinning. That's because they're set to listen to pilot only controls, not SAS controls. So they are going to continue to stay spinning at 100% power. And I have full control of the vehicle with its roll and pitch. Okay, so, and I also have control of the engines. I can um, slow them down to nothing and stop them and put them in reverse. So I have reverse thrust. So if I was to take the park brakes off, you'll see that the plane starts reversing and going backwards. Um, obviously not very far because I've got the pitch turned on, so if I was to just to change the pitch on the engines for a second, you can see I can increase the speed of the reverse. And when I take my finger off the button, they'll automatically go back the other way because the pitch is already set. I haven't changed the pitch, I didn't turn the pitch off. All I did was um, hold Q to reverse the engines and then release Q and the engines go back full power the other way. So we're just going to um, turn SAS on so as I have control of the control surfaces we're going to untrim the engines or unfeather the engines by pressing the key that I have binded to them and once I get to about 15 meters per second the tail is going to lift up and then 30, 35 meters per second, we can lift up the undercarriage and you can see it's got a pretty good um, rate of climb actually for this aircraft. It can still maintain a, a speed while climbing at like 15 to 20 meters per second. I think once I get the speed up a little bit higher, about 70 meters per second, I can maintain a climb of about 20 meters per second. So they, these engines aren't very powerful. Um, you could optimize them, probably make them a bit more powerful. And you also notice there is barely any movement at all in the engines. Um, if we just uh, turn this off there and go into the cockpit view, you can see there's pretty much no wobble in the engine. Oh, there's a little bit of a wobble there when you obviously when you're moving, but very little in stable flight. Um, so we're just going to uh, circle this aircraft around now. So you can see I'm going about 80 meters per second, 70, 75 meters per second. Pretty sure I can do about 70 with a climb and still get about 20, 25 meters per second there. Roughly, just let it level off a little bit. Uh, that'll do. Well, we've turned far enough away from the runway, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll turn back towards the runway now. And this will wash off a fair bit of speed. Then also turning does chew the um, electrical power, but once you level out and go straight, no longer using the um, SAS to help you turn, it, um, now I'm going to just, uh, sorry, I'm going to slow down here. So what I've done was I've deployed my flaps here and my flaps in, inside my tail, which is just two tail fins stuck together and then deployed, they go opposite ways, so it sort of splits the tail, you can see it's um, causing drag there. And I'm also going to feather the engines. And that's going to basically retard the engine and slow it all the way down. So as I can come in for a nice landing here. So we're just going to turn this off so as it doesn't distract me too much with um, coming in for landing. And it flies reasonably straight, reasonably smooth. And we'll just touch down here nice and gently. Oh, that was a bit rough. Sorry, my camera angle's off, I thought I was already touching down. So I've already touched down, but the, the, the tail, I'm not applying any brakes or anything here right now at the moment. I mean, I could like try and reverse thrust it like that, but um, once it gets down to about 15 meters per second, it will drop. And this is with the engines at full throttle, mind you. Um, I could shut the engines off because I have that toggle button, like I said before. So, um, for example, the aircraft will actually come to a complete rolling stop by itself right now. Or almost complete rolling stop. 
it'll move about one meters per second constantly, roughly. So um, I can shut the engines off by pressing the key and it'll turn the engines off naturally over time because the reaction wheel is turned off. Um, and so that will slow down the engines a fair bit. As you can see they're slowing down there now. And they stop. And that's it. And so it doesn't matter if I press Q or E, as you can see I'm rolling and the engines aren't firing. That's because they are turned off and if you turn off SAS you'll see that they are still locked on the trim so they are still on so if I press 2 bang the engines are instantly on and I'm using very little power with them on as you can see so I can just rotate the aircraft again and say um, for example I wanted to uh, I wanted to taxi a little bit faster without having to constantly feather and unfeather the engines like say I just feathered the engines then and unfeathered them to speed up I can uh, um, click on one of the rotor blades if I'm lucky enough to click on one of them here and change the um, deployment level so there's not quite as much of an authority and now it's going to change the pitch slightly so as I'm actually gaining speed again now and put them back up and I'll pretty much not be producing any speed now say for example I back myself into a wall like this one in front of me for example and I can't turn around because I'm too close to the wall or whatever um, I can just reverse throttle Make sure the pitch is turned on a little bit, so as I can um, reverse, and there you have it. I can reverse the aircraft just using the pitch. So, very handy thing to have there is that um, reverse option. If I wanted to, um, yeah, go on reverse basically. So I have full control over the engines at all times, and it's all one part of the vehicle. So you've seen it flies pretty well. They're not counter-rotating, as you can see, they actually are both spinning the same way. I'll just um, slow the engines down a little bit, just so as you can see that they are spinning the same way. They're not counter-rotating, and the aircraft still flies pretty well, pretty level. Um, without too much input. Now there is no like um, power production in here, it's just uh, 10 SAS modules all lined up. Now I did try counter-rotating them and flipping them around all different ways and I noticed I actually got a, a dip in performance and I couldn't actually get above 70 meters per second doing that. So um, I've left them in a straight line. Now how the hell am I doing this? Well it's all due to this one part. Now I said that this is a stock motor but it's not exactly 100% stock. There is one modded part that has been added to make this work without stay put nicks and everything else and that is if I can get close enough to it a docking washer standard free moving now this is part of the infernal robotics mod I think by smoke industries now they have a couple of different um, things that move and rotate they have a standard docking washer well let me just fix my camera angle up here they have a standard camera angle uh, standard docking washer that is movable with um, your rotation, so I can spin it around, you can see there in the corner of the screen it's rotating and spinning. Now I could use this as the motor and um, adjust the speed so it allow it to speed up and go faster manually, so when I press the button you can see um, it spins up faster and faster, so you can you can jack this right up to really high speeds with the acceleration up really high as well. Now it doesn't, it doesn't show how fast it actually spins in the VAB to what it is outside, it will spin a little bit faster than that. But you have to set a key binding to that, like for example I and K or whatever. So now when I press I and K, like in the world, that'll spin, but I have to constantly hold it in order to throttle the engine. So that's not what we want really, because you don't have to be holding a button. It's not like the other, some of the other mods um, have better servo controls and can actually uh, stay moving stay spinning without any inputs or controls so you can just say move at that certain speed it'll move but um this particular mod doesn't have it other mods like uh um i'm trying to think of what it was it's one of the construction mods for example it's got like uh, cranes and arms and stuff that you can um i think you can set from which one was it that had those uh, this one yeah so you can tell it to constantly move at a speed, and it'll stay moving at that speed. So I can say move at a certain speed. Oh, oh, because it's got a, it's got a set range. You can only spin so far this particular item. Um, 
So, basically, if it had this option on that other item, we would have something that could constantly spin around at a high speed, but unfortunately, that item no longer exists at the moment. Someone like to create one through a mod would be absolutely wonderful. But, for now, I'm just using the um, Infernal's Robotic mod, and I'm using the what's called the freestanding washer. Now basically, uh, what this does is anything that's attached to it, if there's any force applied, it's just going to rotate and move around freely, basically. So this thing will sag and flip, and so if I put a, a weight at one end of it, it's just going to naturally want to hang down due to gravity. So basically, all I've done was um, I put one of these on. You can use um, the fairings like you did to cover the other engines, but what I did was um, I'm actually using another mod called Tweak Scale, so I can change the size of things just by tweaking them and adjusting them to make them bigger or smaller. Um, so with Tweak Scale, I used the ducking washer and just shrunk it down to the small probe size, which is uh, 0.625 uh, meters, and then. Um, I connected that to the front of the uh, fuselage tank there, and then I just um, offset it by uh, dragging it in using the offset tool, and then connected the uh, propellers. So basically, that's how I have reconstructed a much more pilot friendly version of the stock propeller blades. I'm not using 100% stock parts, I'm just using the one washer so is that way we don't have to use the spot nicks and having multiple uh, probes with their angles with the SAS modules built into them and also the power that they consume and also keeping part numbers down, it's only one part rather than having to have two um, stay put nicks or whatever and all that other thing so we've already limited down the parts and limit down the vibration and movement because it is actually physically snapped to the engine itself, it's snapped to the um, aircraft so there is no real movement. There is a little bit of a wobble because obviously the, of the length of it. So the longer it is the more it's going to wobble the more it's not going to work so again you want to sort of short and stumpy so um, pushing the SAS units inside each other will sort of work. Um, I've only just barely barely clip them inside each other just to make them smaller just for um just to sort of see how small I can make it like I'm obviously I can push them in inside each other a lot more I've only just barely half clipped them inside each other so um yeah let me know what you think um leave comments in the comment section below and like and subscribe and hopefully post some more videos very soon thank you very much